Okay, today we are going to look at uh, Pahang Trier Paper 2, Section A. Table 1.1 shows example of some reactions. Cl classify the reaction into fast and slow reaction. Uh, this question actually is uh, more to the Paper 3 questions, uh, cliff classification. So fast reaction, based on here, rusting explosion photosynthesis and then double decomposition so based on here okay we know that explosion will be fast reaction double decomposition is very fast then rusting will be slow then photosynthesis will be slow reaction so you just put inside the table here so two marks Table 1.2 shows the information for two sets of experiments to investigate one factor. So what is a factor here? Affects the rate of reaction between the acid and the zinc. So here we look into here hydrochloric acid, not mention the concentration. One gram of zinc powder. Okay, so here using the zinc powder. Set 2 will be using the granules. Huh? So this one, powder form will be smaller size or bigger total surface area. So the time taken to collect 45 cubic centimeter of the gas here, will be hydrogen gas now. Okay, so it's 150 seconds for set 2, will be 180 seconds. So what is the meaning of uh, rate of reaction? So this one is the uh, definition. So, what is the definition? Okay, we know that it is a change of quantity of reactants or products per unit volume. So, per unit time, not volume. Eh? Okay, so now state the name of the gas release. So, so it must be name. Eh? You cannot give the formula. So, name will be hydrogen gas. Okay, next question. Calculate the rate of reaction for the experiment 1 and 2. Okay, so set for set 1, eh? Okay, we know that the volume, we use the formula volume divided by the time. So the volume uh, of the gas collected is 45 cubic centimeter just now. Over the time taken is 150 seconds. So use your calculator. So it's 0 0.3 cubic centimeter per second. Okay, so for set 2, so you use the same thing, eh? volume are the same, cube, one, uh, 45 cubic centimeter, but the time is 180 cubic centimeter. So you'll get 0 0.25 cubic centimeter per second. So two marks. Unit must be stated now eh? whenever you need to calculate the, uh, any calculation you need to put in the unit. Okay, now. Identify one unit that affects the rate of reaction in the experiment. So just now we mentioned already is the size. Huh? Is the size one factor effect? Okay. So here actually, if for me it will be identify another another factor, means beside the size. Huh? beside the size. So if you if really like this. Huh? One factor you can put in any factor, so you can put temperature, you can put catalyst, okay, or you can put size, okay, yeah, any one of these. Uh. Now, sketch the graph of for the volume of gas collected against time in, on the same axis. Uh. So sketch means you just need to put in the important information. Okay, so we need 
the y okay here graph of volume of gas eh? so this one becomes the y eh? remember then against the time so it becomes x so volume of gas okay divide by the time uh, over the time eh? sorry time will be seconds so unit must be stated so volume of gas is cubic centimeter okay so here we know that set one higher rate of reaction all right so we need to reach the volume is 45 okay so basically okay actually we don't know whether it is um, the volume are the same or not oh, at the end because not mentioned no? not mentioned okay uh, so should be mentioned uh, so that we know that the volume of gas collected is not exactly 45 or it will be increased more than 45 okay but never mind okay so we have two times here so 150 another one is 180 so we need to uh, get the uh, in your exam you need to use your ruler now okay so here so here so uh it's set number one okay now set number two okay yeah so in actual fact if the information is given in the question uh, so we know that it will be the same or or different volume afterwards. Eh? But now if you have these two information, then will be enough. So three marks. Eh? Question number two. Diagram 2.1 shows the atomic models discovered by each scientist here. Okay, so match the model with the scientists involved. Use the name given in the box. Where is the box? Okay, James Chawit, Ed, Ernest Rutherford, and J.J. Thompson. Okay, so who discovered the electrons? Okay, electrons is J. J. Thompson. Okay, and then who discovered the neutrons? Neutrons be James Chawit. Okay, then protons will be Ernest Rutherford. Okay, so B diagram shows the standard representation for two isotopes for carbon atoms. Uh. So these are the isotopes. So this one, carbon 14, is uh, very popular in the carbon dating. Okay, state the meaning of isotopes. Uh. So one mark. Okay, so isotopes, remember, you have to know how to define. Okay, atoms of SAM elements okay that has the same proton okay but different neutrons or neutron a uh, nuclear number Next, okay, determines the number of neutrons and protons in the table below. Okay, neutrons. Okay, we decide the protons first. So, protons is the one at the bottom here. So, it will be 6. Then, how about the neutrons? Neutrons will be the nucleon minus the proton. So, nucleon, uh, nucleon minus uh protons eh? so it's 12 minus 6 so it's 6 so it will be 14 minus 6 so it's 8 okay so state the one use of the carbon 14 in our daily life okay actually not our daily life la. it should be application in the scientific field or, or archaeology field okay so it will be uh, to estimate the age of 
for sales, eh? Okay, for sales or artifacts. Okay. Mm. Okay. See, draw the atomic structure of carbon twelve. Okay, atomic structure you have to know. Okay, it is looks like the electron arrangement, but you have to put in the information how many protons and how many neutrons. Okay, for carbon twelve, uh, so we have to know the elect uh carbon twelve. It has six protons, uh, six protons. So meaning that it it has six electrons as well. So the electron arrangement will be two, four. Okay, so here we can draw the electron arrangements. Okay, so this is a nucleus with carbon, shell one, two, and then shell two. One, two, three, four. Okay, so here this is called electron arrangement, but atomic structure. Okay, in the nucleus here, you have to put six protons plus how many neutrons? Okay, six neutrons. Okay, so this is called nucleus. Uh -huh. nucleus. So this is how we uh draw the atomic structure of carbon 12. Question number three. Read the conversation between student and his chemistry teacher. I pour a sodium hydroxide solution into a beaker. Then I add a few drops of metal orange as the indicator. You should not use a beaker for titration. Okay. So meaning that you you want to do some titration. A student did the titration of sodium hydroxide solution and nitric acid. He used 25 cubic centimeter of one more per cubic decimeter of sodium hydroxide solution. He poured the new nitric acid into the burette. Okay. Next, okay, question one. Okay, state whether the nitric acid is a strong acid or weak acid. Explain your answer. So, nitric acid is a strong acid. Eh? So, strong acid. Okay, why? Why it is a strong acid? It ionize completely eh? in water. Okay, two produce high concentration of hydrogen ions okay for weak acid it ionize partially then low concentration of hydrogen ions so state the apparatus to replace the beaker it should be conical flask State the color change for the metal orange when the end point is reached. So initially is yellow, right? Okay. Then change to um orange. Okay. Eh? So just uh you just need to you must mention the color change eh, from initial to the final color. Now B step. A table shows the result for titration. Eh? So here yeah, final reading and then initial reading. Okay, now we we know that. Okay, so here we can find the volume of gas of volume of acid used now. Okay, so by using the final minus the initial, you use a calculator, you can calculate eh? So what is the value? Okay. Now write the chemical equation for the reaction. So, sodium hydroxide and nitric acid. So, sodium hydroxide is NaOH. Nitric acid, HNO3. So, you produce the salt will be sodium nitrate and then the water H2O. Okay, so calculate the average volume of nitric acid. Eh? Then determine the molarity of the acid used. Okay, so first we have to go back to the table just now. Okay, so the final minus the initial 
So we get the three set of experiment uh, titration here. So we have to take the average. Okay, so average volume of acid. Now. Okay, so it's 19.8, 19.8, and 18. Then divide by 3. So you get 19.2. 0 cubic centimeter so this is the volume of the acid needed to neutralize the alkaline okay so here uh, to determine the molarity okay we can use the formula like MAVA over MBVB equals to A over B okay so MA we need to find out okay VA is the volume of acid, eh? so 19.2. For the alkaline, should be 1.0. Volume is 25. A and B is A is for the more for the acid from the equation, so it's 1. Okay, so it's 1. More uh, for the B, B is the more for the alkaline, so also 1. So 1 over 1. Eh? Okay. So we can use a cross multiplication, cross multiply. So meaning that MA times 19.2 equals to 25. So we can calculate MA 25 over 19.2. So you will get 1.2. Three zero more per cubic decimeter. So this is the one we can calculate the molarity. Eh? So I prefer you to, to use the formula. Okay, table four shows the electron arrangement of the atoms for the elements P, T, and Q. Okay, so P is two seven, T is not mentioned, Q is two eight eighteen. 7 uh. okay so write the electron arrangement uh. okay for t uh, question should mention are they from all the all should be from same group okay we assume it is from same group uh. so all are from group 17 so the second one will be 2 8 7 okay oh yeah mentioned already so element t is placed in group 17 eh? should be mentioned in the question uh, first so what is the other name for the group 17 so uh, group 17 also called halogen eh? halogen okay so step one use of the elements so what is the use of the halogens here okay so it can uh, as a bleaching agent, huh? bleaching agent, okay, specifically the chlorine, huh? okay, or to kill the germs in the swimming pool, also accepted. Huh? Okay, now uh, diagram sh 4 shows the apparatus to the reaction between the iron with the gas Q. So, gas Q here is the uh, bromine bromine okay so react with a hot iron wool so it, the excess uh, halogen gas uh, is react with the soda lime here step one observation and one inference based on the observation so the, actually this one is under question pa in paper three yeah? oh, never mind okay so what you will be observed okay we will see bright flame producer huh? bright flame so what is the inference so uh, the gas uh, gas is reactive towards iron uh? okay write the chemical equation so okay so iron react with the q q is the uh, gas so it exists as diatomic. Okay. So for the reaction between the 
iron with the halogen so, so remember it forms the iron 3 okay iron 3 Hal halides huh? so it will be like this okay it's fixed huh? so you can check back your knots okay so have to balance the equation so uh, okay let's say this one times 2 q we become 6 so this one times 3 and Q also times 2, so uh, iron times 2, so iron times 2 here. Okay, actually the Q is the bromine, okay, so you can replace it with bromine. Okay, now uh, experiment is repeated with gas T, so predict the reactivity of the hard or iron. So you have to know okay, for group 17. The reactivity will decrease, right? Okay, decrease going down the group. Okay. <clears throat> so meaning that T T will be above above Q, meaning that T will be more reactive. Okay. Mm. So it predict the reactivity. Okay, so more reactive. Okay, why? Okay, so you can mention atomic size of okay T is smaller. Okay, what else? Okay. Attraction force between nucleus and Valence electrons uh, is stronger. So it is so easier to attract uh, electrons. Okay. You can mention to achieve stable octet. Electron arrangement. Okay, so this is how we can uh, answer the reactivity of group seventeen. Okay, and table shows the proton numbers for the elements in the periodic table. Okay, beryllium, carbon, oxygen, and chlorine. Okay, the proton number is given. So which elements can be can react with the carbon to form the covalent compound? So covalent compounds, so remember, must be non-metal. React with non-metal by sharing of electrons. Huh? So here we can see carbon. So non-metal here we have two oxygen or chlorine. Huh? So you can mention oxygen or chlorine. Write the formula of the compound form in the A1. Okay, let's say you choose one now. Let's say carbon oxygen. No? Oxygen. So you can mention it's carbon dioxide. Or if you choose chlorine, so it'll be C uh, tetrachloromethane CCL4. Okay. Now uh, diagram shows the apparatus that determines the electrical conductivity of two compounds here. So XCL and YCL4. Liquid, no? okay. Now you see the okay. No observation yet. Okay, table shows the observation. Okay, A will be the bulbs is lights out, uh, but B does not lights out. Okay. So explain your observation why A can as uh lights up the bulb but B cannot. Okay, you can mention. Actually, A, A, it can, uh, the YCL, uh, uh, let me see, XCL, XCL solution uh, can conduct electricity. Okay, why? Because it has freely moving ions. Okay, yeah. Then how about uh, liquid YCL? YCL4 
Okay, cannot conduct electricity. Okay. So, inside there, because it has uh, no freely moving ions, uh, or it consists of consists of molecules only. So molecules cannot conduct electricity. Eh? So state the type of compound. So YCl will be ionic. No? Don't write ionic bond. No? You can write ionic only. Then uh, this one is for covalent. So the proton number for the X is 2, uh, 11. Eh? So draw the electron arrangement for the XCl. Okay. So X is 11, so it will be 2, 8, 1. 1 valence electron. So Cl is 2, x 7. So here, you have to know, to achieve or take the x, uh, x will donate the 1 electron, so it achieves stable or take electron arrangement. Then chloride, it will gain 1 electron, so gain 1 electron. Okay, so this is ionic compound okay so let's say we draw the x first okay x two eight so two okay eight okay so this one we draw the uh compound already yeah? so already achieve attack yeah? so we have to put in the charge so this one is plus one okay so the other one will be for the chlorine okay chlorine so special like nucleus first okay first shell one two okay two three four five six seven eight okay this is shell number two shell number three One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I use the different colors uh, to represent the electrons from the uh, X here. Okay, so we have to put in the charge also. Because it's except one electron, so we negative one. Okay? Mm. Okay, question number six, the information below shows a list of apparatus and chemical substances that can be used to carry out an experiment to investigate the electron transfer of a distance in a redox reaction. So the materials given to you, okay, potassium bromide, bromine, sulfuric acid, two carbon electrodes, vomiter connecting wire, U-tube dropper. So by using the information, uh, draw the apparatus for the reaction. So this one using the YouTube, right? So YouTube, okay, so we try to draw it. Use the ruler uh, to draw, okay. But I use a free hand. Uh. Okay, so first we draw the YouTube first. Okay, YouTube. Okay. Okay, so first we have to put in the acid first as the electrolyte now. Okay, so use the dotted line. Okay, so this is the sulfuric acid. Is it? Yeah, sulfuric acid. Okay, then you put either side now. Okay, let's say here, this side you put Okay, potassium bromide. Okay, potassium solution. Okay, and the other side you put bromine. Is it bromine? Let me check. Eh? Mm, bromine. Maybe no reaction. 
Okay, never mind. Later on, maybe we got some other question. Okay, after you have put in the mm, oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Okay, now put in the electrodes. Huh? Oh, electrodes must, must cannot cannot over the cannot over the dip into the elect electrolyte. Huh? So we put it here like this. Okay, so the these two are the carbon electrodes, huh? carbon electrodes. Okay, then connecting wire connect it to voltmeter but normally we use the galvanometer okay it'll be like this yeah but i think this one uh, these two will be no reaction huh? but let's check I describe briefly the steps okay carry out to for the experiment huh? okay so let's say number one okay, pour okay a little Sulfuric acid eh? into U tube. Eh? Okay, let's say half lah, oh. mm, until half full. Okay, number two. Okay, put put a few drops of. Okay, bromine into one side of YouTube eh? YouTube arm eh? we can say it's arm okay then repeat with potassium bromide solution in the other side the other arm of youtube eh? okay then next number three okay dip the electrode, uh, carbon electrode into both solution eh? and connect the electrodes to the voltmeter using connecting wire okay uh, so this is how we uh, roughly briefly do the experiment but i think the result nah, okay mm. okay we we seldom use uh, the reaction normally we use use the other one okay uh, but never mind, it will show the observation. Okay, for potassium bromide, okay, the colors turns brown. Mm, I think no displays, no reaction can occur. Eh? Okay, so for this one, okay, let's say we should change, we should change this question, okay. We should change the question. Let's say here. Let me see. Yeah. Eh? Mm. Okay. Let's say here we put in the potassium iodide. No? Iodide solution. Okay. Mm. So here potassium iodide. So all need to be changed. Uh, iodide. Okay. Here this one also potassium iodide. So then it will be better. So colorless solution turns to brown. Then bromine are able to 
uh, displace the iodide so it turns to iodine actually later on so I explained the observation for the potassium iodide uh, iodide solution in terms of electron transfer okay so we here will be iodide already huh? so iodide ions we lose electrons to produce iodine okay so this reaction uh, actually oxidation uh, occur okay uh, so write the half equation for the potassium iodide again uh, so you have to change it so meaning that iodide change to iodine so you see uh, this one is undergoes oxidation right oxidation lost electrons so there are two yeah, iodide ions Okay, so between two solutions, which one is oxidizing agent? So oxidizing agent is undergoes reduction. So reduction here will be the bromine. Okay, so state the change in the uh, oxidation number. So bromine change to bromide, right? So it'll be 0, 2, minus 1. Because you see uh, if I draw right out the equation, bromide. So it undergoes reduction, uh, reduction. So reduction gain two electrons. So this oxidation number will be zero. This one will be minus one. So from zero change to minus one. Now we look into the essay question number seven. The molecular formula for glucose is C six H twelve O six. So the green plants undergoes a photosynthesis to produce a glucose. So state the meaning of molecular formula and the empirical formula. Then after that, uh, write the empirical formula for the glucose. Okay, so here I've got three marks already. Huh? So point number one. So we mentioned about the molecular formula. Is a formula shows the actual number of atoms of each element in the compound. Okay. Then point number two, the mod empirical formula. It's the formula that shows the actual here. Okay, so the same thing. So actual you change to simplest number, simplest ratio. We, we put simplest ratio of atoms. Okay, the remaining are the same. So the molecular formula is actual, empirical formula is the simplest ratio. So that is the only difference. So remember this almost every year will come out in the SPM. Okay, next we have empirical formula for glucose. So point number three, empirical formula for glucose will be we simplify it. So it becomes C H. 2 O okay uh, so this is the point number 3 okay next the chemical equation for the photosynthesis is given like this uh. so give three information that can be interpreted from the chemical equation so uh, the information here you can you can mention about the qualitative And quantitative. Okay, as it is not mentioned which one is required, so you can choose any one. So we can mention about. Okay, let's say point number four. Okay, we can mention the reactants are.
carbon dioxide and water okay point number five the products are the glucose th c6 h12 or six and oxygen okay so these two are considered the qualitative information huh, of the reaction okay then last point we can mention about the uh qualitative quantitative okay so i put it here point number six so we can mention okay you look into the numbers in front of the equation here you can make it to the most so six mole of carbon dioxide reacts with six mole of water to produce okay one more of glucose and six more of oxygen so this is point number six so in in the exam if you are asked to um, define or give the information based on qualitative and quantitative okay you have to know how to do it so six marks here okay b the plants uh, needs a fertilizer for healthy growth fertilizer consists of nature fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer okay so this diagram shows a synthetic uh, fertilizers uh. okay so based on the diagram uh, so identify the substance d e f and g eh? okay so let's uh, have a look here okay so uh, for the Haber process okay Haber process is the reaction to produce ammonia right okay ammonia write down this contact process is a reaction or process to produce a sulfuric acid correct so you produce a uh, so substance D will be ammonia okay then uh, substance E will be sulfuric acid no? okay so we can we can put it here so after that the nitric as uh, ammonia react with the nitric acid no? so it becomes a fertilizer G G so actually we can uh, predict uh, ammonia with nitric acid so it forms ammonium nitrate no? so ammonium nitrate okay <laughs> then how about the fertilizer Z G uh, F ammonia with the sulfuric acid so it be this one becomes ammonium sulfate okay yeah so write the chemical equation for the formation of uh, fertilizer G, eh? G. Okay, so here already four marks. So one, two, three, four. So another two marks is for the equation. Okay, so for the G it will be reaction between the uh, uh, ammonia with the nitric acid. Eh? So it will form the uh, ammonium nitrate okay yeah so it's balanced ready so this one got two marks eh? and then this one is for uh, g eh? then uh, although it's not asked in the question here but i also show you for the fertilizer f so ammonia react with the sulfuric acid so you form the ammonium sulfate okay so here we need to balance the equation by sometimes two so that it is balanced okay so but he, this one no need to put inside this uh, question because it is not us okay next so between the fertilizer f then and, and g yeah? so which fertilizer is more suitable to be used to increase the fertilizer uh, fertility of the uh, soil 
explain why. So four marks. So here we have to calculate the percentage of nitrogen. So if the nitro percentage of nitrogen is higher, meaning that it is better uh, fertilizer. Okay, so I do the calculation here. Okay, compare the G, F and G, F and G. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's say we we calculate for the F first. So percentage of okay nitrogen uh, equals to okay. So inside the ammonium sulfate, uh, there are two N right, two N. Okay. And then the total is ammonium sulfate. Okay, so times one hundred percent. So we use the uh, relative atomic mass uh, to calculate the percentage here. So we can put in so two times fourteen. Okay, then um, fourteen plus one times four. Okay, times 2 plus S is 32 plus O is 16 times 2. Okay, so use your calculator then times 100%. So roughly you will get is okay, 21.21%. Okay, yeah. So this is for ammonium sulfate. Huh? Okay, next one we would need to calculate for G. Okay, for G. Eh? So G is the ammonium nitrate. No? Ammonium nitrate. So G will be ammonium nitrate. Okay, so we use the calculate calculator. Okay, again, there are two N, two times N n is 14 total up n is 14 plus 3 plus 14 plus 16 times 3 times 100 percent so roughly you will get is 35 percent okay so which one is better so fertilizer g is better so better fertilizer and why? Because the percentage. Because the percentage of nitrogen is higher. Okay, yeah. The higher the percentage of nitrogen uh, in the fertilizer, meaning that better uh, fertilizer. Okay, next C. The grain shows the information of two types of plastics eh? okay, used in our daily life. Plastic A, okay, made from the cornstarch, can be composed by bacteria. Okay, means better. Lah. Made from petroleum friction, difficult to de decompose. Okay, so which plastic can be can cause the environmental pollution? Explain the answer. So for my, okay, so. Which one will cause the uh, problems? Okay, so four points. Eh? So point number one. So plastic B, lah, right? Okay, so point number two. Okay, why? So improper disposal of plastic B will cause Blockage, right? Blockage of drainage. And then you'll cause a flash flood. Okay. Now, next one, burning of plastics. Eh? Will release Okay, toxic or oh, acidic gas, uh, huh? gas. Okay, then the toxic gas uh, will react with the 
rain water then produce the uh, acid rain then you cause the uh, uh, acidity of the soil and so on uh. okay then suggest a way to overcome the pollution uh. okay so we can put number point number four okay we can reduce reuse and recycle the plastic right okay so these are the four points we can write to get four marks here for this question okay question number eight a methane gas is produced in the at swamp area and it is a poisonous gas huh? so it undergoes a combustion to produce a heat energy so draw an energy level diagrams for the combustion okay as given so delta h is negative 900 kilojoule per mole so it is exothermic reaction and predict whether the temperature of the surrounding will lower or rise okay and then explain your answer okay so here we directly know it is an exothermic reaction so the energy level diagram so we have to m level energy okay must remember yeah there it is exo right so you're going down okay be like this okay next we can put in all the reactants here ch4 just copy two or two okay then products we see all two and 2H2O okay then we have to put the delta H is negative 900 kilojoule per mole so you get uh, three three marks here okay now the temperature okay so this one becomes point number four the temperature temperature will rise okay rise uh, rise okay why because it is exothermic reaction okay so five marks okay, next the heat of combustion is for propano uh, is 2000 330 kilojoule per mole okay a student used 2.16 gram of propanol to heat 200 cubic centimeter of water okay then calculate the number of mole for the propanol okay and the temperature change during the reaction okay so here we can calculate the number of mole first Okay, given to you is the mass of the propanol so it's 2.16 the molar mass for the propanol is 60 yeah? so you will get use your calculator so you get 0 0.036 more okay mm. then after that uh, the delta h given to you given to you is uh, 2300 huh? so actually here we can we can um, get the from the information uh, from the formula q equals to q over the mole huh? the q is 2030 the q we need to find later on more is 0 0.036 so our Q you will get is 0 0.036 times 2030 so you will get okay, uh, 7308 kilo so we can round to uh, Joe so 73080 Joe so later on we can put in q equals to mc theta right okay 
So Q we get from the calculation is now 73080. The M is the uh, mass of the water, so it's 200 times C is 4.2. Then we can find the theta. So theta, use your calculator, you will get the value is uh, roughly 87 degrees Celsius. Okay. So after that, Okay, if the chemical equation is given like this, uh, x, so determine x and y here. Okay, yeah, for this one, we can directly show it here. So, how to find the value of x and y? Uh, okay, so how to balance the chemical equation here? Okay, first you look into the carbon. So, here one carbon here three so meaning that directly y equals to three so y equals to three yeah okay so meaning that c all okay then h four times two eight okay eight correct okay next we look into the oxygen oxygen here four times two or four four all here six all so ten all ten all meaning that uh, this one got one O, so you still need nine, right? So nine over two. Okay, nine over two. So we can use the fraction, uh, means four point five, uh. Okay, yeah. So that you times two, you get nine oxygen. Okay, so be careful on this on here, lah, uh, because here already got one oxygen. Okay, next question. Okay, table shows the result for experiment eh, to determine the heat of precipitation. So heat of precipitation of magnesium carbonate. So initial is 30. Lowest will be 30, 26 means decrease. Eh? Decrease in others, we know this is uh, endothermic. Eh? Okay, endothermic reaction. So, uh, table shows the concentration and the volume of the substance. So, volume, concentration the same, volume the same. Okay. So, calculate the heat of precipitation. So, in your answer, includes the chemical or ionic equation. Okay. So, first, we can write the chemical equation first. Okay. So, Let's try here. Okay, so let's say point number one, we write the chemical equation first. Mm, magnesium nitrate. React with potassium carbonate. So you produce magnesium carbonate and potassium nitrate. Okay, so we need to balance the equation. This is chemical equation. If we want to write the ionic equation, it will be magnesium ions and carbonate ions. So it forms a magnesium carbonate because this is a precipitate form. This is ionic. Eh? This is chemical equation. Okay, next one. The question asks you to calculate the heat of precipitation. Okay, so... First one, we calculate the Q equals to MC theta first. So the M is the total volume of the above solution. Eh? So 50-50. C is 4.2. Theta is mm, 30, 30 minus 26. So it's 4. Lah. So you will get... Okay, so it's roughly uh is one six eight zero joule. Okay, so this is the first one you need to find. Number two, you need to find the number of more. This number of more you can calculate either one because they are the same, eh? same. So you can choose any one. Okay. Mm. So uh, we use m. 
mv over 1000 so m is 1 v is 50 over 1000 so you will get 0 0.05 right okay 0 0.05 more okay so uh, third one delta h equals to the q over more so it's one eight one six eight zero divided by zero point zero five more. These are in joule, so you will get um, okay, three three six zero zero joule per more. Okay, if you want to change to kilo joule, it'll be thirty six points uh, thirty three point six kilo joule per more. Okay, then finally you have to put. Uh, you have to put again because this is this is endothermic, so the heat of precipitation is negative thirty six points uh, thirty three point six kilojoule per mole. Okay, yeah. So this is how we uh, calculate, nah? Do the calculation. Okay. Now next, if the experiment uh, is repeated by using fifty cubic centimeter one more per cubic centimeter sodium carbonate uh, to replace the potassium carbonate. Okay. Predict the value of heat of precipitation. Explain your answer. So here. Okay. Our prediction here. Will be the same. This will be the same. Will be thirty six, thirty three point six kilojoule per mole. Okay, be the same. Okay. Why? Because the number of mole. Of magnesium carbonate. Eh? Precipitate. Is the, the same. Okay, why? Because eh, you see, just now we we show the equation already. Okay, so meaning that if just now we we if we change to change to potassium, a uh, change to sodium carbonate. Okay, sodium carbonate. It still will be the same, become sodium nitrate. Eh? So, still the same. Okay, no change eh? because the number of the uh, magnesium carbonate precipitated will be the same. Okay, so this is how we answer the question number 8. Now we look at question number 9. The sting of B is acidic and can cause pain to the skin. So suggest one substance that can be applied to the skin to relieve the pain without causing the further injury. Okay. So give a reason to support your answer. So four marks. So here you have to know the B sting is acidic. Yeah? So meaning that we have to choose something that is uh, it can be used to neutralize the acidic sting, but you, we cannot choose the strong alkaline, eh? so we must choose a weak alkaline. So in our daily life, there is uh, uh, some example of weak alkaline. Okay, so for example, the bicarbonate of soda. Or, okay, so it is uh, very uh, suitable to neutralize the alkaline acidic sting okay of a bee so our answer here we can choose bicarbonate okay of soda okay why okay because alkaline weak alkaline eh? alkaline can neutralize Okay, it is a weak alkaline that can neutralize 
the B sting. Okay. Mm. It will reduce the. Uh, you can add on. It can reduce the uh, pen. Okay. Mm. So next B. A um, diagram shows a flowchart of analysis of qualitative of sort P. Yeah? Okay. So here. Let's look into here. Okay, sort P, if you hit it, you will form the lag to outside and gas Q. Okay, only one type of Q. Uh, gas Q, so it turns the lime water to cloudy, so we know that this is carbon dioxide. Lag to outside means that the sort P will be lag to carbonate. Okay, so lag to outside with nitric acid, it forms a solution R. So solution R will be Lead to nitrate. Okay, lead to nitrate. Okay, uh, so I think we can answer the question ready. Okay, identify salt P, Q, gas Q, and solution R. Okay, state the name of the reaction produced the uh, uh, salt R. Write the chemical equation. Okay, so six mark. So salt P, salt P will be. Okay, lead to carbonate eh? because that we can use the formula or we can use the mm, we can use the name eh? so P okay gas Q so it's carbon dioxide okay solution R is um, lead to nitrate okay so write the uh, state the name of the reaction for the salt producing the salt R. So it's a lead to oxide react with nitric acid. So lead to oxide is the best actually. React with acid, produce salt and water. So it is it is a re um neutralization eh? name of reaction. Eh? Neutralization. Okay, then finally, um, mm, write the chemical equation. So we write out the chemical equation. So, okay, lead to oxide with, with nitric acid. So it produces a lead to nitrate. And water. Okay, so it is not balanced, so we have to balance the equation. Let okay, nit hydrogen, so this one times two. So let's double check again. Yes, it is balanced. Huh? So one, two, three, four. Then this one, five and six. Huh? Okay, uh, correct uh, reactants and uh, reactants and products. One mark, then balance one mark. Okay, so six marks here. Okay, next C. Okay, diagram shows the sort of magnesium. Huh? So magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, and magnesium nitrate. Okay, by using the magnesium metal and the name acid, huh? describe a laboratory experiment to prepare one of the three sorts. Okay, includes the chemical equation in your answer. So ten marks. Okay, this one. Uh, actually needs uh, more explanation okay so you can choose any one of these okay so all are soluble salt right okay soluble salt so soluble salt we can choose magnesium with the acid okay so you can choose any one of these uh, salt you want to prepare lah. okay for example Let's say we want to prepare uh, the first one. Okay, we choose first one. Actually, the steps almost the same. Huh? Just the uh, material use are different. Okay, uh, the acid use is different. Okay, so we can, uh, let's say magnesium chloride. Okay, 
we can use the magnesium with hydrochloric acid. And okay, we want to prepare the uh, magnesium chloride. Nah? So the we draft out the idea first. Okay, so we need to use the magnesium powder and then the hydrochloric acid. Okay, so first we have to make uh, these are the materials first. Okay, so materials we need to use. Okay, so let's say hydrochloric acid. So we use one mole per cubic decimeter hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's say uh, after that will be magnesium powder. Okay, after that, I practice. Okay, we need beaker. Okay, measuring cylinder. Benzene burner. Okay, after that, we need the tripod stand. So for evaporating process later. Okay, then glass rod. Okay, then filter funnel. Okay, then filter pepper. Okay, we need the evaporating dish as well. Okay. Mm. okay, next we need the, okay, start with procedure. Okay, we must explain uh, one by one in details. Huh? Okay, so first one, we measure. Okay, so uh, we have to put uh, volume and concentration. Huh? Okay, let's say 50 cubic centimeter of hydrochloric acid uh, yeah sorry I have to put in the concentration also one more per cubic decimeter hydrochloric acid okay and pour into a beaker Okay, number two. Okay, heat it slowly. Okay, then add, add in magnesium powder and stir. Okay. After that, okay, stop heating. When no more magnesium powder dissolve. Okay, meaning that now already in excess. Huh? Okay, if you stir it at halfway and then the magnesium already gone, then you have to add in the magnesium powder in excess again. Okay, add until uh, some magnesium powder can no longer dissolve. That meaning that magnesium, uh, the acid uh, already in excess. Okay. So number four, filter to remove excess magnesium powder. Okay. Then after that, Okay, now we can heat the uh, solution eh? until saturated. Okay, then let it cool to room temperature. Okay, 
Okay. Then after that. And then when it cool down to room temperature, right? Okay, some salt crystal will form already. Okay, then number seven. Okay, filter the solution and dry the salt form between two filter peppers uh, at least two okay you can use more la. okay so your filter peppers must got answer yeah okay so next we can write the chemical equation so chemical equation okay so we use a, a lead to uh, sorry magnesium react with hydrochloric acid so it forms a Magnesium chloride and uh, hydrogen gas. So we have to balance the equation. So hydrogen times two. Okay. So this is how we can uh, write in uh, essay questions. Okay. Especially the uh, planning of experiments. So here we roughly give the marks. Okay. Now let's say this is one. This is two. Okay, then the steps here got seven. Okay, this one got two. So this one got two marks. Then uh, roughly this one will be uh, more than 10 marks. So maximum is 10 marks only. Okay, yeah. So if you see properly, eh, okay, all the uh, steps, eh, okay, like say measure, okay. Then if you use a solution, right, like SC Akali, you have to mention the volume and the concentration. Okay, yeah. The alkenes are used in uh, for manufacturing of plastics and plastic products. Uh, you can see from the in the uh, diagrams here. Okay, step one example of an alkene and alkene that has four carbons. Uh, draw the structural formula for of the alkene and alkene so four marks okay so first we can choose uh, alkene alkene with four carbons so it will be uh, butane right okay butane with four uh, alkene with four carbon will be butene okay so here we can draw out okay so first one butane so four carbons one, two, three, four. Okay. So no carbon carbon double bond. So this is okay. So this is called butane. For butene, okay. For butene, eh? also for carbon, but one of it. One of the carbon carbon got carbon carbon double bond. You can put carbon carbon double bond at first carbon or you can put second one. Also both can be accepted. Huh? Okay. So just uh, remember if got double uh double bond here, okay. So you cannot put any other bond here. So one carbon four bonds on here. Okay, so this is uh, butene okay butene okay, so four marks in proper disposal of burning uh, and burning of plastic can cause the environmental pollution explain why okay this one I think is quite popular this year okay so you can mention okay number two uh, plastic bottle are non okay, biodegradable okay so meaning that it cannot be composed by the by bacteria okay it in proper disposal of plastic eh, will cause the 
uh, drainage blockage uh, blockage of drainage system of drainage system then later you cause the flood flash flood uh. okay and then after that okay if impending of plastic uh, will release toxic gas uh. okay toxic gas uh, and then it will cause the this will cause the uh, air pollution okay and then this uh, toxic gas actually it will react with the rain water then you produce the acid rain the acid rain will cause a big problem to humans also you can mention that but here on only four marks so you can choose which one you want to explain okay b diagram shows the conversion of pentanol to compound p and q so p is an unsaturated hydrocarbons q is a weak acid eh? weak acid means carboxylic acid eh? okay so here q is a weak acid meaning that it becomes a pentanoic acid eh? Okay, then this one is unsaturated, meaning that it's a alkene, alkene, so it be be pentene. Okay, yeah. So state the name of the reaction one and two, then identify the homologous series for the uh, molecule and the molecular formula of the compound P and Q. Okay, so here, okay, we have to know alcohol. To alkene actually is undergoes dehydration. Then alcohol to form the carboxylic acid is called oxidation. Okay, yeah. So, okay, how do we uh, answer the question? Okay, reaction one is dehydration. Reaction to oxidation. Okay, yeah. So number two, okay, we have to put in the compound, right? And then we need to find out the homologous series. Okay, we let's like say we write the compound P. Okay, so homologous series, ah, huh? it is under. Um, Alkin, alkin, sorry, alkin, right? So homologous, uh, the molecular formula. It is uh, pentene, so C five H ten, right? Mm. Okay, then for compound Q, it is. Carboxylic acid, so it is under carboxylic acid. So the formula, molecular formula is C four H nine C O O H. Okay, mm. so it's pentanoic acid. Uh, next question describe an experiment to prove the compound P is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, meaning that it contains carbon carbon double bond. So include a chemical re equation in your answer. Okay, so for this one, if we want to prove it is unsaturated, okay, we can use uh, bromine or potassium uh, manganate 7. Okay, yeah. These two are the most common, but like say we choose bromine. Uh, try not to use a combustion reaction. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So first, okay, we can directly uh, start with the with the procedure. Okay. 
Okay, so first we add roughly two cubic centimeter of uh, compound P into a test tube. Okay, so next we add in around one cubic centimeter of brown bromine water into the compound here okay inside the test tube okay then the test tube is shaken okay so the observation is recorded okay so your observation here actually you can see is the brown bromine water is decolorized okay so why why it can decolorize because the carbon carbon double bond it react with bromine water so bromine becomes bromide so it becomes colorless eh? so the equation okay so is the uh, it a uh, pentene eh, right c5h10 so react with bromine water so it becomes br2 so meaning is that now see eh, if we draw out Okay, C C five H ten. Let me double check again. Mm, yeah. Okay, C five H ten. So one, two, three, four, five. So one of it got tab, uh, double bond. Okay. So okay. So next now it will react with. Br and Br. So meaning that now Br bromine eh, it will go into the two carbons here. So tab, carbon carbon double bond it, it will uh, break to form two new single bond already. Okay. So the H still remains. Sorry. So this one should be bromide and bromide. Okay. So now uh, in in here, double uh the products here dub, carbon carbon double bond already broke. Okay, broken down. And then it forms two new single bond to put in the to to react with the bromide. So in other way, by this method now we can prove that it is unsaturated. Okay, it is unsaturated. So you can mention compound P is an unsaturated uh, hydrocarbon. So that's all for the uh, Pahang Trial Paper 2. So I hope that you get use of this video. And then like and share this video with your friends. Thank you very much.